Man is by the left, God is by the right. We are separated. But Jesus Christ is a grace that is now standing at the middle to cross it together to make us unify before God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This is Innocent Jackson, AI. I have a very great topic to share with us tonight. And it says, Grace, the unified bond. Grace is a unified bond. It came to unify us with God. And God brought grace. And that grace is Jesus. Amen. So let's take our test from Ephesians chapter 1, verse 6 and 7. Grace, the unified bond. Amen. So let's pray. Father, I thank you, Lord God, as we look into your word and share a good light on this topic, grace, the unified bond. Make us to enjoy this topic and give you glory. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. Grace, the unified bond. Let's read Ephesians chapter 1, verse 6 and 7. Amen. Verse 6, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he had made us accepted in the beloved, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Amen. So, to the praise and the glory of his grace, wherein he made us accepted in his beloved, in whom we have redemption. Why? Because the grace of God has been established in our life. That grace is Jesus. Another word for grace is favor. Grace, the unified bond. We were lost. We were not accepted. We were neglected because of sin. But God in order for God to forgive us our sins, he brought grace, which is Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ came to unite us with God. Now, for example, there is a cross. Man is by the left and God is by the right. And Jesus Christ came to cross us at the middle to unify us before God. Man is by the left, God is by the right. We are separated. But Jesus Christ is a grace that is now standing at the middle to cross it together to make us unify before God. Grace, the unified bond. Don't be afraid. You have been saved by the grace of God. And so Jesus Christ is the grace of God. And the grace of God that brings us understanding. Amen. He has made us to reconcile us back to God. And so God brought grace, which is Jesus Christ, to make us to enjoy the fullness of God. The Bible, the book of Ephesians chapter 2, verse 5 and 6, it said we are seated together with, together with Christ amen, in heavenly places, far above highs and dominion, far above the principalities and powers. Verse 8 and 9, it said we are saved by grace through faith. And that not of us, lest any man should boast. So don't boast that you must go to heaven. But the boast you should have is the grace of God, that is Jesus Christ. When we boast in the law, we are not sinning. But when we boast of ourselves that I must go to heaven, I must go to heaven. And you did not give a testimony of how Jesus Christ has saved you, then you can't make it. But Jesus Christ is the author. Bible spoke of Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. He said, Jesus Christ is the author and the finisher of our faith. Wherefore, the joy that was set before him, enduring the cross, despising the shame. Behold, today he is seated in the right hand of the Father. Amen. Making intercession for us. Our topic still remains grace, the unified bond. Now, let's look at the life of Abraham. In the book of Genesis 12, verse 1, the Bible said that God told Abraham, he said, leave your father's house, your kindred, your nation, and I'm taking to a nation, 
Amen. Into a nation that I'm going to show to you. And so that nation that God took Abraham to, amen, to show him was the nation of, amen, the Israel nation, the Canaan nation. And so we have the Canaan nation or the spiritual, which is heaven that Jesus Christ has given us. But we must leave, leave your father, mother, and, 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 and your parents and your brethren. It means to leave sin aside. Leave worthiness aside. Keep any distraction aside. That was what Christ meant. Keep distraction aside. Things that will make you not to enter heaven. Because heaven is a beautiful place. Prepared place for prepared people. Praise the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, top is remain. Grace, the unified bond. Now we have a broom we used to sweep the house. Now that broom is of different parts, different shares. And when you bind it together, you mean you can sweep. But you cannot sweep with only one broom, only one stick of broom. But when you, you, they are attached together, it can sweep. That is how it is that grace. The unified bond. He came to bind us together. We were scattered abroad. We were scattered apart. But grace came. Jesus Christ, the grace of God, that I reconcile us back to God. If you hear me, say amen. Grace is a unified bond. So don't joke with your life. God called Abraham. He said, come leave your father's house. I will show you a place. And so, so many people enjoying the grace of God today. I mean, you are enjoying it when you have Jesus is the unified bond. You make you to have paradise to bring us together to God. But if you neglect Jesus Christ, you can never have eternal life at all. Jesus Christ is the unified bond between man and God. Amen. Praise the Lord. So the Bible says that Jesus Christ is the unified bond to God. The unified bond. That made us to have eternal life in Christ. Galatians chapter 2, amen. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. He said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. For the life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Jesus Christ gave himself as a unified bond. Without the shedding of blood, there is no reconciliation to God. Without shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. In the Old Testament, when they share, when they commit sin, the priests have to atone. The word atone means whereby they cover the sin. Amen. But God has brought Christ as a propitiation for our sin. So Christ is a propitiation for our sin, which means to wash away the sin that was there. Propitiation. Yeah. We are talking about, you know, the, to wash away our sin. In the Old Testament, they sacrificed the blood of animal to cover man's sin. But Jesus Christ's blood is a propitiation, amen, to wash away our sin. Let's read it from the Bible. 1 John 2 and verse 2. I read. He said, And he is a propitiation for our sins, and not for us only, but also for the sins of the whole world. For Jesus Christ is a propitiation for our sins. Not only for our sins, but for all the sins, for the sins of the whole wide world. So, propitiation means to wash away. Amen. In the Old Testament, they are torn, which is they cover the sin. But in the New Testament, Jesus Christ brought grace and his blood today because animal did not sin. It was man that sinned. So animal sin cannot, animal, animal, animal's blood cannot take away sin. So the blood of righteous has to come. And so Jesus Christ, the unified bond, his blood is the only blood to propitiate our sin before God. And so the blood of Jesus Christ is our propitiation today. And to, to, in our, for our sin, and it's taken away by his blood. Thank God. Hallelujah. 
We are now unified before God. We are now one in Christ. That was the prayer of Jesus before he left for heaven. In the book of John 17 verse 11, he said, I wish that, they, they, that God will make the body of Christ, God will make them one, even as God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are one band together. And so that the church will be also one and not scattered apart. Amen. Will be, be one in Christ. The Bible says, Book of First Peter 2, verse 9, that we are now a choosing generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Amen. That we should show forth the praise of Him who has brought us out of darkness into His marvelous light. So we now have the grace of God to unite us together. Glory to God. We are united. Amen. So therefore, don't be afraid anymore again to pray. Don't be afraid anymore again to come to God. The Bible spoke of Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16. It said, let us come into the throne of grace with boldness that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. The word grace underline it. Let us now come boldly. Sin make us to fear and shiver before God. But now Hebrews 4 verse 16 says, Let us come into the throne of grace with boldness. The throne of grace of God with boldness that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. God will help you today. Father, as I begin to pray today, I pray for everyone that is in bondage to be made free. The one that are shivering because of their sin, they should not know that Jesus Christ said, we should now come boldly to God. We are no more afraid again because of sin. Jesus Christ has given us a confidence. The Bible says of Hebrews 10 verse 35. He said, Cast not away your confidence, which are great recompense of reward. Amen. 1 John 5 verse 14. He said, And this is the confidence that we have in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. This is the confidence that we have in Christ Jesus. So that Christ has done it all by unifying us to God. We now have confidence in Christ. We now have confidence in God. We are not afraid anymore. So we have been united before God. So no one can separate us. The Bible says, book of Romans 8, it says, If God be for us now, who can be against us? Amen. If God be for us, no devil can be against us anymore. Grace has joined us together. That grace is Jesus. Another word for grace is favor, blessing, kindness, mercy. You have it. God will bring men and women to show you mercy and favor because he's the author and finisher of our faith. Grace, the unified God. And Jesus Christ has come to invite before God. We are no more shivering anymore. We are now bold. We are now strong in Christ. We are now elevated. Amen. We have grace. We are not afraid anymore. We are saved. We are saved. We have eternal life. Jesus is our grace. Amen.